Captain, we have them. We've established Transporter Lock, the Star Trek Discovery podcast. Join Ken and Sabriel each week as they explore strange new episodes, seek out new plots and new characters, and boldly go where no podcast has gone before. Hello and welcome back to Transporter Lock, your Star Trek podcast. I'm Ken and joining me is my co-host, Sabriel. Hi, Ken. How's it going? (sighs) Sabriel, I missed being on the air with you last week. I know, right? It was weird. It was like, it was like we didn't even have a good cliffhanger to get people (laughs) excited. I know, like you should have just ended the show with fire. (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry we're off, we were off the air. We each had quite a few things to work on. We were on the go, go, go as tends to happen around the holidays, but now we're back. Yeah, and we have some kind of neat things for you this week. Something different. Yeah, with it being the holidays, we thought we'd be seasonal and offer some holiday gift guide for the Trekkie or Trekker in your life, even if that person might be yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't have to be for the holidays. It could be for just general all-around gift-giving, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, just because... That's right. There is nothing specific to Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Solstice, or any other holiday in these gifts. We're not suggesting Christmas tree ornaments, for example, although that would be a lovely gift. That is not what we'll be discussing today. This is just what we would like to see given as gifts, or at least this is stuff that I would want. Was that your criteria as well, Sabriel? Pretty much, yeah. (laughs) This is cute. (laughs) Yeah, so this is stuff that Ken and Sabriel want. That's it. Yeah, so my birthday is April 1st. <laughs> Mine is not yep. long thereafter. <laughs> but no, this, there's no Amazon wish list for this. We're drawing from a bunch of several online retailers. We will mention that there will be links in the show notes at transporterlock.com to find all these items. If the item is on Amazon, we are using an affiliate code where 4% of your purchase goes to us, but is a specific affiliate code that we track specifically to be donated to the ACLU. So that is where your money will be going. Yeah, I think it's a good cause. And, you know, just a little bit to help them out, all the better. I think they are one of the many organizations that supports the Star Trek philosophy of infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Also, we will not be divvying these gifts up by price tier. That's not how we're going to be presenting them to you on today's show. We're going to be going through categories. And those categories are, I feel like Alex Trebek right now, (laughs) DVDs, apparel, accessories, kitchen, Books, toys and miscellaneous, and potpourri. And potent potables. Oh. <laughs> and what? Potent potables. Potent potables. Is that what Jeopardy uses now? I thought it was potpourri. I think it was both. <laughs> well, either way, I hope I would do better on Jeopardy than Cliff Clavin did. <laughs> now, you see, the thing about Cliff Clavin being on Cheers... Oh, wait, no, no, not going to do that. I I'd recently went through all 11 seasons of Cheers. Oh, I love Cheers so much. <laughs> so did I. Did it ever really jump the shark? No, well, yes, uh, you know, some seasons were kind of less lesser. Like, all right, Diane and Sam, we know it, we get yeah. it. And then, <laughs> okay, we get it. Kirstie Alley's character is really dumb. <laughs> but, uh, no, I liked the whole thing overall. Yeah, the only seasons I have are the first three with Coach. Oh, yeah, Coach, I miss him so much. However... <laughs> Uh, this is Star Trek we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the Cheers podcast. We could start one of those. I'm sure that there are some Star Trek Cheers crossovers. Um, Yeah, there are a couple of them. There was the one where they recast the cast of Frasier as being on Voyager with Kate Mulgrew. Mm-hmm. And there's one where, Kels- where, where Frasier was on Next Generation. That's right. That was cause and effect. And there's one where... Um, uh, oh, oh, uh... The L- Lilith. Oh, Lilith is also on um, Enterprise. No, no, Lilith was on TNG. Uh, oh no, no, yep, no. Yeah, she was like this sex crazed alien who just wanted to get yep. in Riker's pants. Yep. And then uh, Christy Alley was the Falcon. Oh yeah, Savic. See, we all can tie it back eventually. <laughs> it's like the two degrees of Star Trek. Anyway, why don't we start with some DVDs? Yeah, actually, so. so- I'm going to tell you right up front, Ken made the majority of this list, but to be honest, most of them were like, I was almost going to put on there too. And I'm like, kind of like, yeah, Ken's got this. Well, well, so what you're saying is I'm incredibly more materialistic than you are. No, I'm saying that we both kind of want the same things. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we make such great co-hosts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
All right. So the first thing I put on the list was the Star Trek original series 50th anniversary TV and movie collection. This is a Blu-ray box set that Amazon sells for about $92, and it has all of the original series, all of the animated series, and the first six movies all on Blu-ray. So it's not the entirety of Star Trek, but 2016 was the 50th anniversary of the original series, the launching of the franchise. And this box set collects everything that the original cast did together, basically. Pretty much. And I think it's spread out over a collection of 1,234 DVDs. (laughs) That many, huh? (laughs) No, I'm looking at the the stack of DVDs here, and it is a lot. Yeah, I think it's actually 30 Blu-rays. Yeah. But there's a lot of great material there. And, you know, some of us have a bunch of this already, but this is a pretty nice set, actually. When this first came out, I think it was the only way to get the animated series on Blu-ray. I think it has since been parceled out as a standalone, but at the time, this was it. Not that I don't think you're really getting much of a higher quality product than having it on DVD, but if you like Blu-ray... Yeah, I've always wondered, unless you're going to remaster a show, and it's from the 60s or 70s, is there really a big jump in quality from standard definition to Blu-ray? Probably not, unless they actually take the time to clear it up, yeah. Right, so it has to take some effort on their part, but it's not like we were broadcasting in Blu-ray quality back then. <laughs> <laughs> but that would have been quite the temporal anachronism. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, we have another box set here. Do you want to talk about that one? Yeah, so we have the Calvin Timeline box set that has all three movies on it. And, you know, I didn't actually see... So so one of the problems with all the disc releases of these movies is that they lack features depending on where you buy it from, which annoyed so many of us. And I can't tell if this one actually features all the bonuses or not. Yeah, retailer-specific content is terrible. They do it in video games as well, and I'm not a fan of it. I understand the incentive, but I don't like it as a gamer, as a consumer. And they've been doing that with some of the Star Trek movies as well. In fact, I have multiple copies of some Star Trek movies for that specific reason. Uh, I already own Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. I think I bought Star Trek Beyond separately, or... I'm going to if I haven't already, but part of me wants to buy this box set just to have everything so compact, and then I'll have like three copies of everything. <laughs> yeah, I I held out. I was one who's like, no, I'm protesting with my dollars and did not buy Star Trek and End Into Darkness until they put it all on a collection disc of everything. After the complaints, they're like, okay, okay, we heard you. Here you go. In fact, I think it was your recommendation that led me to buy that specific box set. Do you own Star Trek Beyond? I do not yet, and I think it was the same reason. I think they pulled it again, and so I've been in no hurry. You're like, fine. (laughs) So if bonuses or extras are not important to you, you can just get this box set. And of course, we have talked on this show about how almost all Star Trek can be streamed from umpteen million different services, CBS, Netflix, etc. For me personally, I like owning the content, being able to watch it whenever I want without an internet connection, and knowing that the content won't be compressed or buffered. Totally get that. Totally get that. I, I like the convenience, but I, if I were to... But I, like, I prefer the discs for like things like Star Trek, so I can watch whatever I want. We've talked about how difficult it was for me to watch Star Trek Discovery with my mom at her house, because she is not very internet-equipped, and there are no DVDs of Discovery. With these box sets, I have the original series and TNG box set Blu-rays. I can just bring them over to my mom's house, and we watch them, and it's easy. And I would love to do that with these movies as well. All right, that's actually it for DVDs. There are a lot more box sets out there, but... You know, if you want to buy everything under the sun like we have, then uh, you probably <laughs> already have done so. But those two box sets are really great highlights for under a hundred bucks. Uh, the Star Trek movie trilogy is about twenty-five. The TOS box set was about ninety, and those are those make great gifts. A little bit big for stocking stuffers, but still lots of fun. Yeah. How about some apparel? Yeah, there's some cool shirts here. Back to Discovery. If you remember the scene where Tilly. And Burnham are running through the hallways. The disco t-shirt they're wearing is for sale on StarTrek.com. Right. So this is just a t-shirt and it says disco on the front. I don't think it says anything on the back. Uh, we have chat. We've joked about how it should say the word very. So it's discovery. They have little Star Trek discovery insignias, the emblems on each short sleeve so that you know it's Star Trek. And they come in all the sizes all the way from small to XXXL. And it looks like regardless of the price, it's only $27. At the time of this recording, it is a pre-order because it's shipping on December 11th, which by the time you hear this podcast, they will have been made available. 
Oh, you know, I did not catch it. It was all pre-order until you said that. Yeah, actually, I've seen these shirts in the store for months, and people have been waiting for them. And now it's coming out tomorrow at the time of this recording. Awesome. Yeah, it's weird, though. Some people are reviewing it on the Star Trek store, and they're saying that their shirts fit perfectly. I don't know how they would know that if this was a pre-order. <laughs> maybe there are some places where they like buy it in person. Or maybe there's a wormhole. Oh, it could be that, too. That's <laughs> one. We'll include links in the show notes for both the women's cut and the gender-neutral cut. Uh, Ken found, I did not realize they had this on here, or I had forgotten, uh, on the Star Trek.com site. They also have a pride version of a lot of their, their shirts. You have the um, Star Trek insignias from every series on a t-shirt, but they're in pride colors. And so I think that's really cool. Yeah, they have them for TNG, TOS... Star Trek Voyager. Each insignia has a slightly different curvature to it. That's why they're different. I don't know that I would recognize one versus the other off the top of my head. But for those who are especially detail-oriented, they can order just the one they want. And they come on either a black charcoal or white shirt. And it's either a gender-neutral cut or a women's cut. So lots of choices there. Yeah. The TO, or excuse me, the TNG and Voyager ones look like they're com badges. As well, so that makes it easier for me to stand to stands out to me right there. Right, but they're not located where a com badge would be. These oh, are no. large and center, almost like a like Iron Man would be. Yeah. I actually have one of these shirts, and I don't remember if it came this way or if it's just faded over time from so many washings. But the colors are not as vibrant as I would expect from an LGBT flag. Hmm. So that's that was a little disappointing. Nonetheless, when people see it. They say, oh, that's a great variation on the Star Trek insignia. They immediately recognize the two symbols that are being used here. I've used them in various marches here in Boston, and people immediately got it. So that's pretty cool. And I am especially proud to be able to tell people this is not some sort of a fan-made Etsy shirt. This is an official shirt from the Star StarTrek.com store. Which is awesome. Yeah, it's great that they are behind it. So I like that. And of course, what goes great with apparel, but some accessories. Yeah, so, so I was hitting up the Etsy store, looking at some things, and I saw that they have two items that I, I think are rad. First up, we have uh, Star Trek Discovery Insignia Badges. These look like the badges that our heroes and other characters wear, with the, the Delta on the chest. Even the Admiral's badge is on there. Yeah, they have all the different colors, whether it's bronze, silver, gold, or even black. And they're made from mirror acrylic or brushed metal texture acrylic. I'm not an artist, but I know that the end result is amazing because these photos are gorgeous. Yeah. And they have each of the departments from the sciences to command and medical and ops. And yeah, they're gorgeous. These are gorgeous. Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look, uh, for, for a size comparison, they're about three quarters tall, which I think is smaller than a Smurf. Three quarters, uh, three U.S. currency quarters. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Not three quarters of a what? <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, and regardless, it's still smaller than a Smurf because I think those are three apples tall. <laughs> and I didn't even notice until I was looking at these, as you just said, the various departments, medical operations, etc. They actually have different insignias. Like the medical badge has a little cross on it. Yeah. I never even noticed that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So each one is $10. From the pictures, it almost looks like you're buying a set, but it's $10 each unless you want Admiral or Starfleet Command. Those are 20 and 25 And you can choose your rank, anything from Insignia to Commander to Captain and others or to blank. So, yeah, this is pretty cool and relatively cheap. Yeah, I would like to see a picture of the back of these because I'd like to know what they connect to or how they attach. Like, is there a safety pin or a lapel on the back or something? Let's see. Oh, upon request, a magnetic strip can be omitted. Oh, there we go. Or the, ma ma the magnetic strip. So there is by default a magnetic strip and it can come off. Yeah. I wonder if it's two pieces of metal so that you put one inside your shirt and one outside. I've seen Star Trek badges like that, actually. I think that's how it is. So that you can just attach it to anything without poking holes. Awesome. Nice find. It says almost gone. There's only three left. Maybe that's the specific badge I've chosen. No, it says that before you even do that, so I'm not sure what they mean. Maybe they, they might engrave it after mm. they carve it out. Well, with any hope, this Etsy store, Altered Alloy, will make more. Oh, and I should mention, since that is Altered Alloy and not like Paramount or CBS, these are probably unofficial, 
but they look pretty cool. And as long as the creator doesn't get sued, I think you can buy them in good conscience. Yeah. And by the time this episode airs, there might be one left. <laughs> <laughs> because there's two of us. Now, you did a lot of shopping on Etsy. What else did you find? I found some adorable earrings. They are the uh, TOS Starfleet Delta. And I just think they're cute. Only $9. There's gold and silver. They're very tiny. <laughs> yeah, and you can buy them in metal, plastic, or clip-on. Yeah. So if you have allergies to certain materials, that's what they're advertising these different options for. You can choose one that suits you. Yeah, short and simple, but I think they're cute. Yeah. I mean, I don't have much experience buying or wearing earrings, but if I saw somebody wearing these, I would definitely say, hey, we should get to know each other. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, not like that. Just like, oh, How you, you doing? <laughs> Sabriel, stop that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure people listening to this will really appreciate what you're insinuating. Thank you. I was like, actually, I was thinking more like me, but <laughs> no, that, that's <laughs> why are you trying I, to get I me would, in trouble? I would be doing this. Yes, if you saw somebody wearing these, you'd be doing that. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to go for. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, that's better. Shoo. All right, let's say, move on yes. to things that won't get me in trouble. <laughs> uh, let's go into the kitchen. And actually, speaking of apparel, this is very similar. And unfortunately, it's also unavailable. It wasn't when I added it to my Christmas wish list a while back. It is a Star Trek The Next Generation science apron. So it looks like it's like the, the, the greenish color of the sciences, and it has the Star Trek insignia on the upper left, and it's an apron for you to wear in the kitchen when you're cooking to keep all the flour and powder off your nice clothes. Unfortunately... It's listed as unavailable. There are other Star Trek themed cooking aprons out there, like one that shows the Vulcan salute, but I didn't want that one. I wanted this one because it looks like a Star Trek uniform. The store that it says it's shipped by is Think Geek, so I went to the Think Geek store and they don't list it either. Yeah, I think this is an older item. I kind of remembered it when you linked it, but I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, the next best thing I can find are TOS-style aprons, where it's just one uniform color, either red, blue, or gold, and it has the insignia on it again. Some of the reviews were not great. They said that the material wasn't as high quality as they expected for this price, which is $27. Uh, so I'm left kind of wanting. I Maybe I should have removed this from the list entirely since it's technically unavailable, but the idea of a Star Trek apron is really cool. I generally don't wear aprons in the kitchen, partly because I don't have one I really like, this would get me to wear an apron. Oh, uh, you totally should. You can get. I have this really adorable flirty apron. You should get one of those. What's a flirty apron? It's just an apron that has uh, little frills on the sides and whatever. It's really cute. <laughs> Go to flirtyaprons.com. That's not a Star Trek thing, but you should check it out. <laughs> is, is that seriously the website? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And it's not. It's, it's safe for work. It's safe for work. One of the reasons I don't wear aprons is because so many of them are focused on cookouts and barbecues. And as a vegetarian, that doesn't appeal to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you're good here. Okay. There are some ones that look naughty-ish, sultry, as they put it, but but majority are more like this classy or cute or pretty. Great. I can't wait. <laughs> Let's see. Here is a, another kitchen item that I think neither of us want because we both already have it. Yeah, we do. I cannot. This one's awesome. Tell us about it. This is the Star Trek Enterprise pizza cutter. I was so excited when I first got it. And it was one of those items like, what would be cool if I had but I would never buy it myself, and someone got it for me for Christmas a few years ago. And it cuts pizza like a mofo. It is very sharp, and it's very good. I highly recommend it. Yeah, it was a gift for me as well. I was aware of this product. Again, like you, not something I would buy for myself. And when I got it, I was like, oh my god, I know exactly what this is. I already love it. <laughs> yeah, if, of like everything I suggest today, I think this is my number one. The only downside I have found for this is I have a pizza pan that I cook my pizzas in, and it has some uh, pretty high ridges on the side, so it's like a dish. And with the four-inch diameter of the blade on this cutter, I can't always get right into the corner of the pizza. No, I suppose I can see that, but it's a, that's kind of a pizza cutter in general problem as for the round ones. That's true. That's true. I mean, I do have a pizza cutter that's smaller, and I have not had that problem, which is why I am able to c compare the two. Also, if you're just cutting pizza on a flat surface, like probably a lot of people are, that's not going to be an issue for you regardless. Yeah. Uh, this one says it's currently on sale for 33% off, which brings it down to $20. Normal price is $30. Either way, it's a steal. 
Yeah, I again, number one product, like, absolutely. Number one. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go out of the kitchen and into the library. We have some great books listed here. You found the first ones. Yeah, I, I have not actually read these. These are discovery books, but I want to. These are the first two that have been released. So the first one's called Desperate Hours, and then the second, the follow-up, it's a two-part series. It's called Drastic Measures. Apparently, these books are pretty good, but I cannot vouch for them personally. Well, the first one, which is by David Mack, was reviewed on this podcast by one of our listeners who wrote in. Uh, so thank you, Mike, for sending that. Uh, it sounded like it was a great way to fill in some of the backstory because it's about Captain Georgiou and those years when Michael was serving under her on the Shenzhou. And then the next book has both Georgiou and Lorca on the cover. Yeah, I, the, the description says it's a uh, younger Lorca. It's uh, Lieutenant Commander Lorca. So it's and it's ten years before the battle battle at the Binary Stars. Nice. I would like uh, this. This book is by Dayton Ward. I've actually interacted with quite a bit on Twitter, and I used to update his Wikipedia page for him. I've read a few of his books. I don't think I've read his Star Trek books. He most often collaborates with a co-author, but this book he flew solo, and it looks like it's available uh, Kindle and paperback as are Desperate Hours. So you can buy them in print or online. Right on. Oh, d actually, Drastic Measures. It says the paperback edition is not coming out until February. Oh, that would be roughly around the time that the third Discovery book is coming out. I just heard about it on Twitter, but I'm sorry I did not see the author. And now that I look at the Kindle edition, it says you can pre-order it one click, and it'll be delivered to your Kindle on February 6th. So you can still buy it now. It still makes for a good Christmas gift, but not one that your recipient will be reading right away. Yeah. Uh, the first one, though, Desperate Hours, it says book one of two in Star Trek Discovery, a two-book series. That one is immediately available and has been since its release in September. There are actually a lot of books on our list. Uh, that's the first of several. The next one, I don't think either of us have read yet because it's so brand new. It's the autobiography of Jean-Luc Picard. No, I have not read this one. Yeah, it says, The story of one of Starfleet's most inspirational captains. Neither of us have read it, but I have read some reviews of it. They seem to like it, but they say that it sort of makes an effort to tie in all these threads that were previously disconnected without mentioning some people that we do know were part of Picard's history. There's even a Star Trek Discovery Easter egg, if you are a careful reader of the book. I don't know what that might be, though. But nonetheless, it is available in hardcover for about $16 or Kindle for $13. That's not a huge price difference. Uh, for the extra three bucks, I'd rather have the hardcover. Yeah, that's not bad at all. And I'm a little confused. It's, oh, it's odd. autobiography. I was thinking biography. I'm like, how is this a biography? <laughs> oh, he wrote it. It's by yeah. Jean-Luc Picard, <laughs> as edited by David Goodman. Yep, just me being a, a butthead. <laughs> 288 pages, not bad. Oh, and the author of this book has also written for Futurama and the Golden Girls. Oh, right there. This credits... Oh, and Enterprise. <laughs> well, there's that. Some show. <laughs> yeah, something about Star Trek, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. All right. <laughs> there were previously other books in this series by him, including the autobiography of James T. Kirk, which came out in 2015. Uh, have you read that one? No, I haven't read any, any of those. Me neither. This one is the story of Starfleet's greatest captain. <laughs> like, well. how many superlatives can you add? <laughs> the greatest captain, one of the most inspirational captains. Eventually, they're just going to have one for every single Star Trek captain that was listed when Saru asked the Discovery to list the best captains ever. Star Trek's okay as captain. <laughs> <laughs> Who would be on that list? Uh... Let's, let's save that for an episode title. Oh, episode. I love it. Okay, we'll talk about that again. <laughs> Star Trek's okayest captains. <laughs> let's see, do you know anything about this next one? It's a comic, is it? Yeah, it looks like another pre-order. I'm sorry, there are so many on this list. It comes out also in February, the end of. And this is a graphic novel series. I think it collects graphic novels or comic books that are already being published or have already come out. It's called Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Broken. You know, I am a sucker for the Mirror Universe episodes, and so I'm all about this. Yeah, I have read a whole bunch of Mirror Universe novels, but this is a graphic novel. We are linking to the Comixology listing for it, which is an Amazon company. You can read the comic online for $18. And it is all about the 
TNG cast their Mirror Universe counterparts, which we never got to see in live action. There have been novels about it that I've read. This may be the first comic book adaptation. I'm not quite sure about that. But the covers look awesome. Oh, for sure. We got one of just Picard with a goatee, of course. Of course. Looking massive muscles. Data with massive muscles. And Deanna wearing a very tight tank top. And no muscles. <laughs> no muscles whatsoever. She's just a blob of flesh on laying on yeah. the ground. Yeah. Blah, Agreed. blah, blah. But yeah, and Data looks almost like he has been assimilated because he has this eye patch and like one really exposed robotic arm. Yeah, he's got at least one very buff arm. I don't know about his left arm. I can't see it very well. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> uh, it says that the plot is that Jean-Luc Picard and his cadre of mutineers set their plan into action with the spoils the greatest prize of all, the Empire's only galaxy-class starship, the USS Enterprise. So apparently he does not start as the captain of the 1701D. He is out to obtain it for himself. Yeah, so this must take place after um, the Terran Rebellion on DS9, unless it breaks universe canon. Yeah, there are so many canons, especially when it comes to the Mirror Universe, that it's hard to say, because there were a bunch of TOS comic books where... I think even Mirror Kirk came into this universe and tried to steal our Kirk's Enterprise. I don't know. This sounds like uh, Deep Space Nine. Oh, this, in the description, it says into an alternate Mirror Mirror Universe. So it's a separate Mirror Universe. Oh, my God. Seriously? It's an alternate dimension to the Mirror Universe. How many Mirror Universes are there? Well, I mean, we have, there's infinite universes possible. So. <sighs> in infinite combinations at that. Yeah. I mean, just like Worf went around, bouncing around. All his different timelines and universes. The same thing can happen in the mirror universe. I suppose. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, there's a great series. Uh, what was it called? Not Dark Matters. The mirror universe series. It was like all four series at the time. It's not on our list here, but I can't remember what it was called. Was it a comic book? No, it was a novel. Novel series. We had oh, yeah. Shared... I read that. I read that too. It was like Shattered Mirror. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember liking it at the time, but I have no idea if, if it holds up. So if you like the mirror universe, check them out. It was several anthologies in a row, and I think it finally ended with, like, Lion's Roar or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. But again, none of it's canon, and we're going to encounter contradictions. Of course, of course. Uh, speaking of mirror universes and also just different timelines and different time eras, I included in this list one of my favorite all-time Star Trek novels. It is not new. In fact, it is 18 years old now, but you can still buy it on the Kindle or a used copy. And that is Star Trek The Lives of Dax. Have you read this one, Brie? I have not. I just added it to my list. It's one that's been in my purview for years, and I just never got around to it. So, of course, as we know on DS9, Jadzia Dax was the original character on that show, and she had had many hosts before for her symbionts. And we get to meet some of them either through proxies or flashbacks over the course of the seven years of DS9, including its latest host, Esri Dax. This anthology is nine short stories, one for each host, and you get to see how the symbiote grows and evolves over the course of them and how it influences and affects the lives of each person as they start to draw upon the many centuries of lives and experiences that the symbiote comes with. That's really cool. I like that idea. It really gives you the opportunity to get to know each host as its own independent character, not just as somebody in Jadzia's past. Because at some point, each host had to go through what Jadzia was going with through with acclimating to this new host. And it really puts into context who Jadzia is when you meet her. She's not just this 25-year-old young woman. She's somebody who is a 25-year-old woman with hundreds of years of memories and experiences. That's rad. I, I like this. I want to get. I want to read this sooner than later. <laughs> I recommend it. Speaking of one of her past lives, one of them makes an appearance in the Tobin in Enterprise book in an Enterprise novel where he helps design. It was during the Romulan War, and he helps design a new series of star starships that cannot be controlled by the Romulan drone. Oh, that's cool! I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, and that's why. Uh, it was it's a it's a, it's a beta of universe reason for why we went from Enterprise ships looking you know futuristic ish to sixties uh, <laughs> design and then back to the future ones. It was the way to disconnect all the consoles, similar to Battlestar Galactica on the relaunch, where the older ship was able to survive because it didn't have the connectivity of the newer ships. 
I was just thinking that. That's a good point. That's interesting. <laughs> so, sidetrack, but... No, very relevant. And also, cool. if you have not yet read the Season 8, quote-unquote, relaunch of DS9 that picks up right after the series finale, you'll want to read The Lives of Dax first, because it ties in. Oh, right on. Good to know. All right. And finally, our final category, we have some toys and miscellaneous. You found a couple of more things on Etsy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this was cool. I actually thought of you, Ken, because you have similar, or you have very nice posters in your room. This is a travel poster for Vulcan. And just it's one of those, uh, like, uh, 50s, 60s, almost googie design. Very, very basic minimalist art. And saying, live long and prosper on Vulcan. And I like it. Oh, I like that. It reminds me of, was it the director's cut of Star Trek Three? Which which Star Trek shows us the Vulcan homeworld? Uh, let's see. We we were on it in three at the end of three and beginning of four, part of four. I might be thinking sure. of four then. And then we also saw it, uh, I think, in one was it for a moment? The motion hot, picture hot, for a hot second? No, 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 no. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. I'm confusing three again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got a good look at Vulcan in a number of episodes and movies, including the 2009 one, but I'm thinking specifically of the giant statues that are on Vulcan, yeah. and this poster seems to be an artistic representation of that. Very nice. I think it's, I, just, I just like the art. I think it's really cool. One caveat, though, this is an $8 poster, and what you get is a PDF. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, this is not a shipped physical product, so you would have to find a high-quality printer it's only 8x10, so it'll print on a standard piece of paper, but if you want it to be high quality and to frame it, that will be on you, so that's an additional expense. Good catch, good catch. What's this other Etsy item you found? Yeah, so I, this just <laughs> made my eyes light up, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a LED lamp of blueprints for the original series Enterprise, and it's basically a cutout with... um. God, what's the style? It's basically a clear sheet. A schematic? Uh, Sk- oh, no, I'm just like, there's a, this is a, a style. It's not, and, it's a an name. overhead? <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm just like, it's a cut, It's a blueprint, but they cut, etch it out into a pla- glass of, a sheet of plastic, and then they light it up. So, it, so it's backlit. Almost like backlit. It's light coming from down below. Okay. Neat. But it, it looks really rad. I like, And you can pick your color and... It just looks really neat and actually very, very uh, Star Trek-like. And just like that Vulcan poster, whose creator sells other posters, it looks like this Etsy store sells other designs as well, if you want to check those out, like Star-Lord, Guardians of the Galaxy, or Overwatch. You have to say, or Overwatch, and Zelda. <laughs> Ooh, Zelda. Yeah, Majora's Mask. Nice. Got it. I'm sure there's a name better, better name for this than what I can come up with. One thing I have to call out this creator on is that he says it's perfect for your man cave. Ah, boo. Yeah, uh, there's nothing gender-specific about technology, Star Trek, or these schematics. <laughs> it's useful for man caves, bars, garages, and desks. Nowhere else. <laughs> also, unfortunately, it says ready to ship in four to six weeks, so it might not be ready by Christmas. Oh, balls. <laughs> uh, this is unlike the PDF in the previous one, which is available instantly. Uh, but still, you can maybe print out a little certificate saying, I got you the schematic, and it'll be here in time for your birthday. <laughs> nice. It says, yeah, these printouts or these schematics include an integrated three-foot USB cable. So that's how it lights up. I'm stuck looking at the Overwatch one. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one last gift for the really, really special somebody in your life. And this has to be ordered by December 22nd. Because that's when reservations close for Star Trek The Cruise 2. Now, this is a celebrity cruise that includes George Takei, Brent Spiner, Robert Picardo, Connor Trenier, Ethan Phillips, Vaughn Armstrong, Max Grodenchik, John Delancey, LeVar Burton, and so many um, other amazing alumni of Star Trek. And it looks like there are two different sale dates. One is January 5th to the 11th, and the other is January 11th, to the 17th. I presume everybody is going on both, but uh, so they just basically dock and then leave again. And these are all going from Miami down to Honduras, Belize, Mexico, and then back to Florida with a couple of days at sea in there. This looks incredibly affordable. It's about $75 per day per person. So if you only pay for one day, do they like helicopter you out? No, they, <laughs> they throw you overboard. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes more sense. But they also have fill plate. 
It was really cool. Oh, the bad astronomer. Yep. And they also have um, at least one actual astronaut. Is it Rob Perlman? No, no, no. Rick Searfoss. Very cool. Yes. And there's a lot of stuff to do on a boat, on a cruise ship. This includes all the onboard luxuries, all your meals, for example. None of the alcoholic beverages, but 24-hour room service. And... This is what's really blowing my mind, the $75 per day. That comes out to about $450 a person. And it says that the second guest can stay for free, if I'm understanding this right. There are some promo codes if you click on pricing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Maybe this would get me over my irrational fear of cruise ships. And all the various many diseases that they come with. Diseases. And when you grow up and you remember seeing cruise ships sinking a lot on TV, you know, it kind of really... Gets in your head. I never saw a cruise ship sinking. What are you talking about? Yeah, I could send you links. But I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are these like actual real cruise ships that did this happen? Yeah. Oh, that's awful. So, yeah, I have this fear of cruise ships. Let's not put those links in the show notes. <laughs> My God. So Ken's like, we should go. I'm like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now everybody will hang up from this podcast terrified of cruise ships. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, God. but you'll have the cruise to yourself and like 30 Star Trek stars. Oh my God, that's terrifying. <laughs> they would come. They would be surrounding you. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, I went on my first cruise earlier this year. Will Wheaton was there and he was super nice, so accessible and approachable, so funny. And this is whether he was just lounging by the pool with his family or whether he was on stage doing a show like Welcome to Night Vale. It was just a lot of fun to be on a cruise with him and I can't imagine being on a cruise with all of them. I, this, I would be almost overwhelmed. It's a, basically a floating Star Trek convention. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty cool. I don't know if the prices include autographed photos. For you know, When I was on my cruise, the Joko cruise, it did but with this many Star Trek celebrities and knowing how other conventions work, where they do charge for autographs, I have to wonder. Yeah, if anyone has any information, please feel free to share. Yeah. And if anybody wants to buy any of the DVDs, apparel, accessories, kitchen, books, or toys and miscellaneous that we've discussed in the last half hour, you're welcome to find those links on transporterlock.com. And no, that isn't a hint. And if you want to buy a cruise for me, I can be your plus one. I will brave it. You just get me out there. <laughs> That's true. You do have to fly yourself to Miami unless you already live there. Yeah. Right. I will brave it and be your plus one. <laughs> <laughs> you are so generous, Gabriel. I know, aren't I? The things you and put modest. yourself through, honestly. <laughs> so that's it for this week's Transporter Lock. We are enjoying mixing it up while we're waiting for Discovery to come back on the air on January 7th. And hopefully all the many assignments and extracurriculars that you and I have tackled that kept us off the air for a week will be temporary we'll be back on the air we don't know what we're doing with christmas and new year's coming up because those are both holidays that we observe in a secular fashion so that might disrupt our schedule but we'll think of something yeah absolutely very cool well this is ken this is April. happy holidays and talk to you next week if you've enjoyed this episode please leave a review on itunes and keep your hailing frequencies open by following us on twitter at transporter lock or subscribing to our podcast and email newsletter at transporterlock.com what's with all the boobs stay away from my nose